Speaker Nancy Pelosi has announced that she will form a select committee to investigate the January 6th insurrection. Joining me now to discuss, Illinois Republican Congressman Adam Kinziger. Congressman, thank you for your patience. Obviously, a lot of breaking news this morning. You were one of yeah. the 10 House Republicans who boldly voted to impeach President Trump. You went out on a limb. So would you join this committee? Yeah, I don't know how it's going to be set up. I don't know if uh, the minority leader gets to pick or if Pelosi is. I mean, I'd certainly be open to it. I think it has to be a fair investigation. Uh, it cannot start with a end goal in mind. We just need answers. We need answers for what led to January 6th, who was communicating with who, all the stuff that, you know, is is prone to conspiracies because we simply don't know the answer to or we don't have proof of it that needs to that needs to get found out so something has to be done i'd rather see a select but, committee or but if it's not going to be that then i think what's being set up is is fine but no matter what speaker pelosi does the fact that so many of your colleagues were unwilling to to agree to something on a bipartisan basis do you believe the Republican Party and uh, its base are going to believe anything that comes out of this, no matter what Nancy Pelosi does? I don't know. Um, you know, I've, I've been through this for the last six months where there's been real facts presented and, and, you know, some people just put their head in the sand and pretend like they're false facts, which is no such thing. So, uh, you know, all we can do is tell the truth. All we can do is get to answers. All we can do is has, have proof of stuff. And that will help the arc of history judge this accurately, even if some of the people today refuse to acknowledge the truth. And uh, so that's why I think it's important when we voted on a, a commission uh, for January 6th, even though that didn't get through the Senate. Um, and, you know, if that doesn't work, if the Senate doesn't come around, then I think a select committee is probably the best way to go. But it should be seen as and should be fair, because I think the answers that will come out of a fair committee are still going to point to the fact that it was Donald Trump responsible for January 6th. Oof. Former VP Pence last night, uh, he actually said that there is nothing more un-American than one person choosing the president. He said he was proud to certify the election, which drove many of those people into the White House, into the Capitol that day and, and, and calling for his hanging. Um, how important is it that Pence said something like this? And why do you think he didn't do it sooner? You know, I don't know why he didn't do it sooner. I mean, look, the number one, number two, and number three in line of secession to the presidency were all within striking distance of a mob who made it clear they wanted to kill them. They almost killed a police officer. I definitely think they wouldn't hesitate uh, to kill a politician. And, uh, and so I wish he'd have spoken out earlier. I do think it's important for him to be saying this now, but I think for the vice president, what he really should do is stop trying to kind of walk this line a little bit between you know, somewhat supportive, somewhat not. And just be very clear. Tell the truth. You know, Mike Pence claims a lot that he likes to tell the truth. Just tell the truth to the people. Let them make a decision. And I think, you know, my base and, and the people that have been so abused and misled by folks like Donald Trump will wake up and see, I hope. You know, Capitol Police Officer Michael Fanone. He described what he went through on January 6th with my colleague, Andrea Mitchell. I want you to watch this. I was severely beaten and also uh, electrocuted numerous times with a taser at the base of my skull. Uh, the injuries I sustained were a traumatic brain injury uh, as well as suffering a heart attack. And um, I also, I do grapple with, uh, with PTSD as a result of, uh, of that day. That man's not a politician. That man right there is the definition of a patriot. Republicans call themselves the party of patriots, the party of law and order. Congressman Kevin McCarthy is going to meet with him. But Officer Fanon has already said that McCarthy's staff has been really difficult with him, haven't treated him very well. What in the world's going on here? I know you it wasn't your office, but can you explain this to me? Yeah, I mean, look, I've been actually asking the leader uh, to meet with Fanon for a long time. But look, it's going to be an uncomfortable meeting because. It's and what does he say truth, to you? Truth confronting. Well, no, I mean, it, it, Kevin and I haven't even really talked in months. Um, you know, it's more having to be through Twitter because I think he's focused on trying to, you know, win over the Trump side of the things. But look, I, I know Michael Fanone well. He is. Go hold ahead, hold on, Congressman. <laughs> it, on, on what planet, right? You're elected officials. You're not able to communicate with, with, with your leader 
only via Twitter. Can you imagine if that was a place of business? Oh, I can't imagine if this was a place of business. Can you imagine if you guys worked in private industry? Can you imagine if you worked in private industry and you were only allowed to talk to your manager via a tweet? You'd get fired. He'd get fired. I truly can. It is very dysfunctional at the moment. Totally, totally. But I think it's important to say, too, With it's going to be hopefully, I'll tell you, Michael Fanone will not paper over the truth to, depending on whose company he's in. He will tell Kevin McCarthy what happened. He'll be very clear about it. And uh, look, here's the other thing people need to know. For a police officer uh, and you know military, it is tough to stand in front of people and say that you suffer with PTSD. It's tough to admit that you have to you know, bring up your kid's life to beg for your life to survive. Michael Fanone was tortured. And if we don't take responsibility for what happened six months ago, because we're so concerned with winning an election in a year and a half, um, I, I don't know what that says about us as a party. We have to tell the truth, take accountability for what happened, and then we can move on. Until then, we're just pretending like this was 10 years ago, and people are still denying it. And so it's impossible to move on until we take full accountability. No offense then, but what does that say about Republican voters that they want you to do that? I think what it says is that the people that they trust to lead them have been silent with the exception of a few of us. And then it's easy to demonize a few of us because now we're the aberration in the party. And so they look to say, well, what do you guys, and everybody's either quiet or simply denies the truth. I think it means that our base voters have been abused. I mean, literally every American is kind of born with this noble patriotism. And there was a group that just spins that patriotism. Donald Trump abused that patriotism to say, support me or you're a traitor. How many times I get called a traitor on the Internet, for goodness sakes, because I don't fall into line with that theology. Um, It shows that there's been significant abuse. And I think people have to wake up to that. And that starts with leaders telling them the truth. 